Nike and Travis Scott have done it once again. Encouraged by the positive reception they received on the reverse mochas that released earlier this year, Nike and Travis Scott have followed up that release with a triple black colorway on the Air Jordan 1 Low. I've been eager to get this shoe in the studio for a while now, and hopefully by the end of today's video, I'm able to provide you guys with a definitive yes or no answer in terms of if this shoe is worth all of the hype it's been garnering. So with all of that out of the way, my name is Chris Young, and let's go ahead and run the beginning B-roll on the Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott Black Phantom. Top tier packaging is what we've come to expect from Travis Scott and this pair is no exception guys. Before we are even introduced to the actual box, we do get this protective sleeve in this matte finish that features four different logos. The first is the Nike Air logo, the second being the Wings Air Jordan logo, the third is Travis Scott's emoji character, and then the final logo featured on this sleeve is the Cactus Jack branding. The majority of the box is done up in that matte black once again until you take a look at the Nike branding which takes on a glossy finish and then turning this box over to the front, the sizing tag does read Air Jordan 1 Low OG SP with the official colorway stating Black, Phantom, and Black. As for additional accessories that come with the box, once you open the lid, you will see that both shoes come individually wrapped in these black paisley bandanas that feature insane artwork and are rounded out by a Jumpman logo and Cactus Jack branding once more. The Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott Black Phantoms released on December 15th for a retail price of $150. These were available on Nike sneakers as well as select tier zero retailers around the world. So let me know down below in the comments section if you are a lucky recipient of this shoe for retail or if you struck out completely. Now that we've discussed the general information and the analytics of this shoe, it's time to showcase the intricate details that this sneaker boasts. Starting out with the upper, you can see it is comprised of two very premium materials. The first of which is this black nubuck that creates a brushstroke effect when you rub your finger back and forth on it, and then the overlay is comprised of this black suede. Taking a look at the tongue, it is done in that usual nylon material, and at the very top of the tongue, we get Nike Air branding in white. The stock laces that come inserted in this sneaker are a black wax lace, but if you don't prefer those, Travis Scott and Nike do have you covered with two additional sets. The first of which is this black and white lace that almost reminds me of zebra print, and the last lace that you receive with this release are these red wax laces. As for now, I'm probably going to keep the black wax laces in, but if my outfit needs a little bit of pop on a certain day, I wouldn't be against throwing in these white and black laces. I feel like they would add a lot of flair to this sneaker, and the red would work well too. I feel like all three laces correspond to the sneaker very well. It's just a matter of personal preference in my opinion. Behind the tongue we get, in my opinion, the most polarizing part of this sneaker, which is that fuzzy cotton sock liner, and then once we remove the insoles, the left insole features Cactus Jack branding along with a Varsity Red Jumpman logo on the heel, and then the right insole features Nike Air branding in Varsity Red along with Travis Scott's name along the heel. To break up the connectivity of the black panels on the upper, we do get this white contrast stitching which plays its part really well, and of course the defining feature of every Travis Scott sneaker to date is the backward swoosh found on the lateral side. On the medial side, we get a Nike swoosh that is facing the right direction, which then overlaps Cactus Jack branding then in this faint black color. On the back of this shoe, we get two logos that have been nicely embroidered into this black suede. On the left heel, we have a beetle, which represents Travis Scott's daughter Stormy. And on the right heel, we have an Air Jordan Wings logo. The remaining details of this shoe are pretty straightforward. On the lower half, we get a black midsole. And then turning this sneaker over to the very bottom, we have that iconic Air Jordan 1 outsole in black, finishing the look of this very minimalistic design. 
All right, so let's quickly talk about the sizing of the Air Jordan 1 Lows. So recently, I've discovered that 1 Lows fit very roomy for some odd reason, but if you are a person who prefers a little extra room in the toe box region of your sneakers, you should stay true to size with this silhouette. However, if you are like me and you like your sneakers to fit absolutely exact, no heel slippage whatsoever, I would highly consider going down half a size in this colorway. I can't speak for other Air Jordan 1 low colorways on the market, but for this one in particular, go down half a size if you want to minimize heel slippage and creasing over time. I don't usually discuss resale prices on this channel, but since this pair is going for an insane amount of money, I wanted to talk about it just for one moment. After I checked GOAT and StockX, I think the other day, these were consistently going for seven dollars to $800 across the board. And if you were to ask me whether you should hold or sell this sneaker, I would say sell it right now if you need the capital. Otherwise, if you have an insane amount of capital built up and the confidence that these will rise in value over time, then store them away. These will no doubt be $1,000 again one day because the versatility of this sneaker is endless. And as DS pairs become Distinct, people will reach back for these. So if you have the patience and just the diligence to be able to hold these for the long run, you should be able to cash out in the foreseeable future. But I understand if you need the capital right now, especially if you hit for retail. We've made it to the point of the video where I give my final thoughts and analysis on the Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott Black Phantom. I was already a big fan of these when I saw initial images months ago, but upon getting these in the studio today, my admiration went up a mile for this pair. It's the black combined with the popping of the white stitching on the upper, and another thing that really gravitated me towards this pair is how versatile they're going to be. This is essentially a sneakerhead's dream, a bailout shoe. When you don't want to wear your loud colorways, you can just chuck these on with any type of outfit and they will just go. But those are just some of my thoughts. Now I would love to know what all of you guys think about this sneaker. Were these on your radar or do you not think highly of this Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low at all? Also, let me know how you guys would rank all four 1 Low colorways in the comments section. In my opinion, it goes OG first, OG Mocha. I would have the reverse Mocha second, the Fragment third, and then I would have the Black Phantom last. But even putting these last is not a slight. These are no joke, guys. And if you get to see them in hand, you'll see the craftsmanship, elegance, and the versatility that I was talking about on display. With all of that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If this was your first time checking out my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as we continue to embark on our next milestone. And as always, thank you so much to the OG supporters for your constant love and support, which ultimately keeps me motivated on this platform. Now it's time for me to throw on the Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott Black Phantom. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'm out.